the first question is related to neontology the question is what is the loading dose of caffeine citrate remember caffeine is the drug of choice for apnea of prematurity remember caffeine is very important it is a drug of choice for apnea in preterms and because of caffeine now the risk of chronic lung disease which we call it as bronchopulmonary dysplasia has drastically reduced so since the uses of cpap and caffeine citrate the use of bronchopulmonary dysplasia you know the incidence has drastically reduced so you should know that the loading dose of caffeine citrate is 20 mg per kg and the maintenance dose is 1 to 5 mg per kg and it is given once a day so remember caffeine is the drug of choice for apnea of prematurity it is not aminophylline or theophylline because caffeine has a wide therapeutic index remember caffeine has a wide therapeutic index as compared to theophylline and it is easy to give because of ease of administration the next question i asked you was about uh, milestones so remember a child knows his age gender he can count three objects he can repeat three numbers it's at three years so this is a straight away you know a question taken from the nelson's textbook so remember this is at three years now remember uh, when we define aneurysis the next question is on aneurysis we define it after five years it's defined as at least two episodes involuntarily a child has emptied his bladder at night for more than two times a week for a period of three months after three years after three years okay remember it's after three years okay okay so remember that okay okay all of you so remember this now when we treat aneurysis remember the first and the best treatment is alarm therapy these are basically alarms you know which are attached to a child's undergarment and slowly and slowly this child will make a condition reflex that whenever his bladder is full he has to you know get up and go to the toilet so this is the best management for long term remission remember only if alarm therapy fails we go for a drug called desmopressin remember nowadays we only use one drug which is called desmopressin oral or nasal okay so we don't use amipramine anymore so it's only desmopressin okay so after alarm therapy if it fails then only you go for this okay now here is a child all of you it's a 7 month old child and this child has a fever tachycardia his bp is 65 by 60 by 20 he has a history of diarrhea okay so this child appears to be in shock which can be hypovolemic or septic since he is also having fever it can be hypovolemic or septic shock okay there is tachycardia and uh, we don't have a idea of the perfusion here but since he has hypotension and tachycardia i will i'll say it's hypovolemic oblique septic shock and remember the drug of choice for shock is a bolus of normal saline so you have to give a bolus of normal saline 20 to 40 ml per kg okay and then you can repeat a bolus up to 60 ml per kg if you are in the icu total bolus can be 60 ml per kg if you are not in the icu you can give up to 40 ml per kg total you have to give this bolus fast over the next 1 hour now children get multisystemic inflammatory syndrome following covid it's called missy multisystemic inflammatory syndrome in children with covid now remember uh, it is of three types it is mild kawasaki disease phenotype or shock now in mild there is no shock there is no cardiac dysfunction so drug of choice for mild missy is low dose steroids for 3 to 5 days so give iv methylprednisolone 1 to 2 mg per kg for 3 to 5 days if this child with covid now has features of kawasaki disease then we give ivig 2 g per kg so you give ivig 2 g per kg over 16 hours remember the maximum dose of ivig is 100 g with low dose steroids same methylprednisolone 1 to 2 mg per kg for 3 to 5 days 
if this child is very sick, you know, he's very sick, you know, he's in shock, he has multi-organ failure, then you give high dose steroids with IVIG. High dose steroids is IV methylprednisolone 10 to 30 milligram per kg for 3 to 5 days. So for mild MISI, remember, we give low dose steroids for 3 to 5 days. Now, which vaccine, COVID vaccine is not used in children? So remember on your screen first, this is the Pfizer mRNA vaccine. Okay, Pfizer. Then we have Moderna here. Okay. Then this is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is about to come in India also. And uh, my institute will also be a part of it. So Johnson & Johnson single dose vaccine is very soon coming to the India. So remember, this is uh, the, you know, Covishield vaccine, which all of us got. It is a chimpanzee adenovirus vaccine, which is not used in children. Okay, Pfizer, Moderna. In fact, Pfizer is now approved for children more than five years in U.S. Moderna is used in teens in U.S. Okay, but Covishield is not yet used in children. Remember, uh, Covaxin is... Of course, all of you know, in our country nowadays, we are giving Covaxin for children more than 15 years, which is an inactivated vaccine. Now, what are the criteria for MISI in children? Remember, age less than 19 years is the most important criteria. Age less than 19 years with fever three days or more and two of the following. So two organ systems should be involved like Kawasaki disease, myocardial dysfunction, hypertension or shock coagulopathy, GI problem. In fact, remember, diarrhea is the very common presentation of MISI. And elevated acute phase reactants and no other cause of infection and evidence of COVID-19. So remember, if you look at here, which, uh, which of the following are on the WHO criteria? This is there. This is there. This is there. So two, three, four. So this is the answer. Okay. Age should be less than 19 years. Now, uh, remember, ophthalmia and neonatorium is a very important topic. And every neat PG, you have a question on that. Here is a baby whose gram stain showed no organism. This baby has ophthalmia and and pneumonia. So this is the most common cause of ophthalmia and which is called chlamydia. Remember, chlamydia is most common. But gonorrhea and pseudomonas are very severe, which can cause corneal involvement and blindness. So remember, if I say most common cause of ophthalmia neonaterum, so this is ophthalmia neonaterum, most common cause will be chlamydia, but most blinding cause would be pseudomonas and gonorrhea. Now here is a child, all of you, who has who is immunocompromised, he is hypoxic, bilateral hazy opacities. So the differential diagnosis of a child who is hypoxic, immunocompromised should be pneumocystis carnii and even CMV. So you should do a multiplex PCR on the ball. Ball will be my next choice of test and you look for pneumocystis and CMV. Now, the drug of choice for pneumocystis is cotrimoxol. But if a patient is hypoxic and there is worsening hypoxia, you add steroids. So remember, children and adults who have pneumocystis carnii with worsening hypoxia, you give them steroids in addition to cotrimoxol. Remember, you can give oral or IV. They are both equally efficacious. So oral or IV is equally efficacious. You can give any of those. Okay, remember CMV should have been another diagnosis, but they did not find CMV here. So the answer is pneumocystis.